recording <clears throat> and bless. So, um, just just sort of a full disclosure. This is a uh, a talk that I gave um, at a conference about a about four or five in April, whenever that was. Um, so it's kind of a, a, a going to have some stuff left in that that may not apply to you, like my LinkedIn account at the end of this, tell you how to contact me. You all already know how to contact me. You're welcome to add me on LinkedIn. So, um, but this is for, before we really get into this, I'll kind of explain. We take a trip, we take several trips every year. So you pay fees for these classes, right? And we're not just like <laughs> spending them on fancy old rusty Subarus, right? We are, like, we're putting that, that money doesn't actually get us at all. That stays in an account for you. That's where the computers come from. Um, but part of that is include, includes student travel. So every year we take a, tr a couple of trips um, where we pay for students to go on these trips as well. Some students just got back from uh, CTN, Creative Talent Network, which is a uh, sort of a concept art and 2D animation uh, conference in California. And ETSU paid for their plane ticket and their hotel and all of that for them to go uh, to that conference. In April of every year, we go to Raleigh. We take a pretty decent amount of students with us, usually upper-level students who are getting ready to graduate or getting closer to graduation, to a conference called East Coast Game Conference. And it's all of the game developers. So it's like the East Coast version of GDC, right? Um, or PAX or something like that. Um, and so that's what this talk was from, was for a uh, presentation I gave at that conference. Um, there's a lot of students at that conference, and everybody wants to know how do they get better, how do they get a job. There's lots of variations of that. And that's where this kind of came from, but it, it realized that it has a couple of extra uh, elements to it that may be beneficial to you, particularly now that you're at sort of the beginning of this journey, right? Like, where are you going to go from here? So, um, so I thought it would be nice to be able to tell you, like, because I've sat in, what, in these seats. They were actually much worse seats. Um, but, but in this building, I've sat there before. So um, I just thought it would be nice for you to be able to sort of hear that story. So um, it's called Everyone Sucks at First, 18 Years of Old Demo Reels. So you all know me, but um, this was me circa 1998, right? Um, Everyone had a boob. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this Everyone Sucks at First, uh, Old Demo Reels. Um, and the year is 2019, but this was me in 1998. Um, at about that time, oh my, why is this not going along with me here? There we go. Um, so in 1998, um, it's not doing it. there we go. Let me just end this presentation and start this over, because it's not following along with my notes. From the current slide, there we go. Uh, so. A few months, so I started college here at ETSU uh, in 1998. So a few months before I went away to college, um, I was at a Borders bookstore in Knoxville, Tennessee. Anybody even know what that is? So I, <laughs> I mean, uh, you know what a Knoxville, Tennessee is, but um, so and I saw this magazine on the shelf, right? I had no idea, um, particularly what I wanted to do. Um, I, you know, had to decide whether I was going to spend my hard-earned Arby's paycheck. <laughs> on um, this magazine or a Butthole Surfer CD. Anybody know what the Anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, I picked this magazine, and um, uh, a few years later, so I just downloaded the Butthole Surfer CD. Um, so Bugs Life came out later that year, and I got to watch this, uh, this short film. Anybody watched it? Jerry's Game? Yeah. Um, and, and this was my bar. This, was, this, is, this is what I wanted to do. And I saw this, and I um, I realized I wanted to bring stuff like this to life. Like I watched it, and I was just like like dumbfounded by it. Um, so the only problem with that, you know, animation isn't easy. So um, so I went to ETSU. So the reason I came to ETSU was because of a person named Sarah Douglas. She told me about the department here at that time, and this was again 1998. But Toy Story as a point of reference, had come out in 1996, right? Um, so everybody was talking about 3D animation. It was the new thing that was going to kill 2D animation. And she told me about the program that we had here, which was one of the only one of its kind. And they were starting 2D animation, or 3D animation at that point. Um, and it was actually a 
pretty big deal. We were, we were one of the only schools in the country that were teaching Autodesk Maya. They had written this giant grant and gotten all these computers. So I packed my bags and I went to ETSU. So, um, so sorry. Yeah. So at that point, the digital media program um, was actually just called the ADL. It was the Advanced Visualization Lab. It was one lab that had about five, six computers in it. Um, each of those computers cost about two hundred thousand dollars. <coughs> yeah, it was crazy. They were they were uh, SGI machines, um, and so all the, the the program looked different at that time. All of instead of being able to just jump right into Maya, you had to take a bunch of core classes and and sort of work your way into it. But you would get into those classes around your sophomore year. And so the year before, uh, or the summer before I was getting ready to take my first 3D class, which was called Rhino, um, I, it, I made a demo reel. I was really excited about it. So over that summer, I opened it up and started learning a bunch of stuff on it and, uh, and made my, my first demo reel. So you all have already seen this, but I'm going to show you anyway. Um, this was the summer of 2000. And the class that I was going to be taking was called Rhino, which is the software package. It still exists. It was taught by Keith Makoff, who you all, some of you may know, he teaches principles of visualization still yet. It's a great guy. Um, and so I made this demo reel, and then at the end of the summer, I brought it back. And I was super jazzed about it. I showed it to everybody. I was like, check this out. Look what I did over the summer. I, what I didn't really realize is this was my first demo reel of many. Right, and that's what this is really about. So let's let's watch my first one. cards inside the duck. I can 3D print this. Um, so, <laughs> so um, interestingly, this is actually the first assignment in the Rhino class that I would be taking the next year. I was so excited. I bought the book early and did this first assignment over the summer. So um, every presentation needs an obli obligatory bullet points list, right? So, um, so let me reiterate something. This. I was really proud of this reel. <laughs> I showed it to everyone. Um, I did all of the work in there, including that bitchin' guitar solo <laughs> that y'all were jamming out to. That was me. Um, <laughs> but I think the most port important part to remember about this is that, that sucked. Like that was bad. your work right now. Like everybody in this room, everybody in this room has a better demo reel than that 
already, <laughs> right? Um, I, let me reiterate, it sucked. Like it was, like, even for the time, it wasn't good, right? I, and congr I mean, Bugs Life came out that same year and you can watch Bugs Life without cringing too much, right? Like, like it's got some stuff, it's got, yeah, I, I love Bugs Life. But you know, you'll see like, oh, those shadows look weird or something like that and it, it still looks very solid, right? Um, so that was like, I, there's a, uh, even for the time, like, but I was still proud of it, right? Um, but even I could recognize that, um, that it wasn't what I, what I wanted it to be, right? Um, what I was proud of, of was the accomplishment. I was proud of having done that, right? Having put that effort into it. Um, so anybody know who Ira Glass is? Yeah, so he's, um, he is an NPR, uh, whatever, reporter, person on NPR who talks. Um, and he has this really great speech that he gives about being a creative. Um, I, won't, I won't read you the whole thing. I kind of paraphrased it here. He basically says, all of us who uh, do creative work, we, do, we get into it because we have good taste. Um, and for the first couple of years, you make stuff, and it's just not that good. That was me, right? Not that good. Um, but your taste, the thing that got you into it, is still killer. Like, you still have good taste. And your taste is um, why your work disappoints you. A lot of people never get past this, this phase. They quit. And he said, it's normal to take a while. You've just got to fight your way through it, right? So it's a, it's a little bit of a longer talk that he gives about this, but I just thought that, that was a really great point. That I looked at that, and what I was proud of was the effort um, the effort I had put into it, not, um, I, I could recognize that it still wasn't where I wanted it to be. That there were still things that I had problems with. That may feel familiar to you. Like you, you're looking at your work now and being like, why can't I get this thing to look exactly the way I want it to? So, um, so but you know, again, I could recognize that this was not this, right? The thing that had gotten me into it um, was not, um, I wasn't being, I wasn't making Jerry's game yet, and that was frustrating me. Um, so college was frustrating, um, but you know, uh, uh, the, when you're when you're in those sort of situations, you kind of get an option. Uh, you you keep trying or quit. So I kept trying. Um, I, I feel like this is a like part of this talk gets a little depressing at times, but I'll I'll pick it back up at the end. I'm, I'm, it's an arc, ride the arc. Uh, so. <laughs> So um, this will feel familiar to you because this is a very stressful major, right? Um, I found myself at one point, like my late junior year, um, just so stressed out with this. Like I just kept trying, kept trying to make it better. Everything I did, um, and it just all kept piling on top of me. And I found myself just sitting in my car at Real to Real, which just actually still exists, the movie theater right here, and just like in the rain, bawling my eyes out and just being like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I picked the wrong thing, right? This is not for me. I'm not going to be able to do this. Um, and then I passed out and, like, slept for a few hours. And then I woke back up and, and like, got right? yeah, angry some more. And I listened to some tool, got <laughs> angry, and then I fell back asleep. For a while. It was like this six-hour ordeal where I just sat in my car having a nervous breakdown, right? Your junior year is coming. You'll see. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I'm just oh, picking it. No, so I re recognize that this is hard, right? Like, what you're feeling is not an anomaly. Like, if you're feeling stressed out by this, it, it's because it is hard, and, and, and it's worth acknowledging that. Um, but you're always left with this choice. Like, are you going to quit or are you going to keep going, right? Um, and um, begrudgingly, I just I, I kept trying. I, Something that did occur to me and something that was really helpful to me, to me at this point is after I drove away from that real-to-real -real parking lot, um, the reason I was so stressed is the amount of work I had to get done just did not seem physically possible in the amount of time I had left, right? That semester, you know, my final was coming. I was like, crap, how am I going to get all of that done? I can't get it done. It's not possible. My answer to that was I'm just going to work as hard as I can. I'm going to do the best I can. And when I get to the day that that final is due, if that's what happened, then I have nothing to apologize for. Even if it's incomplete, I worked the hardest I could. I got the most I could out of it. Nobody can ask any more than that of me. Um, so 
I haven't played Bandersnatch yet, or watched Band whatever you do to Bandersnatch. Um, but, <laughs> but I decided to choose the keep trying option. Um, and by the time I graduated, this was my demo reel. So this is my second demo reel. Um, actually, this isn't my demo reel yet. I'll show that here in a minute. Um, so this was toward the end of my time there. This was the very first character animation I ever did. Right? The first rigged character, the thing you're doing today where you're putting bones in this and making your character walk, this was my first one. Um, <laughs> don't judge me. Uh, so, um, yeah, I... I can see it breaking. I can see it breaking. That reminds me of, like, the computer from Courage the Cowardly Dog. Yeah, it does. It. Yeah, I really love that style where everything's all warped and twisted and everything. And, um, yeah, his shirt's a little too short. He's wearing a Leonard Skinner shirt. Um, anyway, I loved it. I was so excited about this. Um, but, you know. So, this was the demo reel I graduated with. We are the music makers. And we are the dreamers of dreams. I added that to My, uh, none of those numbers are actually real anymore. Actually, the Yahoo email address may still exist. So. Um, yeah, you have to keep that one Yahoo mail account because like, you never know when your like, great aunt's going to email you from her in Barton. Hotmail. AOL. Yeah, her AOL account. My, my wife still uh, uses her email from college, and it's like if she knew it was going to follow her forever, she would have just picked a different email. Anyway, so um, so this was what I graduated with. This is when I graduated my bachelor's degree. That's That was my work, right? And the thing you may notice is I, um, I got off track a little bit. I really thought I was going to be an illustrator, and then for a while I thought I was going to be a filmmaker. Turns out I'm not good at either of those things. Um, I still like both of those things. I still like filming stuff. I still like taking pictures. I still like drawing. Um, but it was just all over the place, right? It wasn't very focused. And I applied for some jobs. I didn't get anything full time, not even the post office. I, I applied at the post office. I was like, I, I'm sure anything that will pay me. 
Um, I ended up getting a little bit of contract work um, for a um, for a company to do some character models, but they they were all right. They they were way better than that guy that was that I just showed you. But um, but nothing was paying me full time, and I was living in my mom and dad's house. And I was like, well, I got I gotta figure out what to do with my life. And uh, just like all major big events in your life, um, it snuck up on me. I fell in love. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so this, I met um, the woman who would eventually be my wife. Um, so I met her back in the internet when it was uh, still embarrassing to say that. And, <laughs> and uh, it's not, like, it's like 80% of new relationships start on the internet now. Uh, so I had me, uh, but I was having trouble finding a job and because um, yeah, my dinner room was just scattered everywhere, right? So uh, I decided to go back to school. So mainly because my wife lived right down the road. <laughs> I was like, yeah, sure, ETSU the sequel, let's go back. Um, at that point, we had a two year Master's of Science degree. I'll point out I said Master's of Science because that's not a terminal degree. That will come up again later. Uh, terminal degree means the highest degree you can get in a specific field, right? And since there's a doctorate of science, a master's of science still isn't the highest. So uh, I came back to ETSU and I decided to focus on the thing that I really had enjoyed and thought I was doing pretty good at, which was character animation. So the sequel. The sequel. Um, so it was a two year program. After those two years, um, I put together another demo reel, um, and it was a little bit more focused again on character animation. So let's check it out. Oh, I love that. I love it. Oh, I remember the first time I ever had Jello. Polly brought it home from the grocery store and bought. Oh, come on! Sorry. Oh, I remember the first time I ever had Jello. Polly brought it home from the grocery store, and boy, was it delicious! <laughs> she, she was a beautiful woman, Polly. Yeah, fabric simulation's hard. of seismic proportions tear through the body. You don't like your job. You don't strike. You just go in every day and do it really half-assed. That's the American way. There's no time for mom, Rosie. It's already begun. Almost crashed that P-51 into Clark Gable's makeup trailer. Oh, let me finish. He came out with his pants around his ankles, and he was screaming, Who the hell's playing that tuba this time of night? And you, and you said, Earl, it, it wasn't true. What do you mean, Sid? You told me that story. Earl, it wasn't true. Fly a plane. Uh, 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 oh man, uh, that was actually me. Uh, <laughs> that was, yeah, that was my. So this is a short film I have yet to finish. Uh, so <laughs> it sounded like it was a real film that already exists. No, so it's yeah, it's a short film. We're still, I'm still. Some days I go back and tinker with it, but it's it's aged so much. There's still a lot needs to be done to it. So I don't know if I'll ever finish it or not. Um, interestingly, the guy who does Earl's voice, the old man, uh, the, the sort of the balder guy, um, was actually one of the animators for Mufasa. So he was uh, um, uh, one of my friend's teachers. So this was a collaborative project I did with my friend Brad. Uh, Brad currently works at 343 on Halo. 
um, as a character modeler. So he did some of the models, and I did a little bit of modeling, but then he went and fixed my model. <laughs> um, so, uh, so that was where I was at coming out of grad school. What am I? I focused for two years on nothing but character animation. And I was like, surely this is enough. I, 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 so I, I took this um, and um, presented it. You had to present it as a thesis, and they let me graduate. There Yay. I am. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Tricked on. Um, so about two weeks after I graduated, I hopped on a plane. And... <laughs> and got married in fabulous Las Vegas. I highly recommend it. Like when you're ready, when you're wanting to get married, run away from your family and go do it in Las Vegas. Unless your family lives in Las Vegas. Uh, <laughs> very low stress. I was, you know, I was graduating. Uh, I'd been working on my thesis. Uh, I was exhausted. And I was like, I need a vacation. Let's just go on vacation and come back married. Um, <laughs> No, yeah, well, we planned it. We told people, we're like, if you want to fly to Las Vegas, you can be there. Elvis showed up. He apparently cared enough. Uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll get to see the video of this if you ever take my character animation class because mm -hmm. it's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> so, but then but when I came back, normal life resumed, and it was back to the job hunt. So um, a few months after I got married, um, I, I was pretty proud of that current demo reel, like the one with all the animation on it. Um, so I painstakingly burned 50 individual DVD demo reels of this because that's how you had to do it back in those days. Um, because there wasn't Wi-Fi everywhere and there weren't smartphones or tablets or whatever. I had a PSP and I had my demo reel loaded on that, so I put it on there too. And I, uh, I went to a conference called SIGGRAPH. It's, uh, it actually still exists. Uh, we actually send some students to that every year, too. Um, but it's the Computer Graphics Conference, uh, so the national one and international one. There's one in Japan, too. Um, so I took all 50 of those demo reels like on a suitcase. Um, I took my PSP, and I went to the job fair there. I came back from that conference with zero demo reels. Like, I gave every one of them out. I applied to 50 positions at, you know, SIGGRAPH 20, 2006, so that's when it was. Um, this was in Boston. I gave out all 50 of them, and I came home to wait, right? Like, all right, they're going to call me back. Um, and after several weeks of waiting, I received nothing. Right? <laughs> so, I... I was a little in a funk, right? I was like, what in the world is happening here? Like, I've done everything. I got two degrees, right? Um, like, none of this made sense to me. Um, so little did I know what was waiting just around the corner. It was a 2016 or 2004 Ford F-250. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that hurt. Uh, so, um, yeah, so that's how I wrote my name. Yeah, this story keeps getting better, right? <laughs> um, so I was in a wheelchair for about two months. Um, my, my wife had multiple surgeries. We've been married like two months at that point. Um, and she was in the hospital for like 60 days. So like, okay, so when I thought it wasn't going to get any worse. So really this like search for a job kind of took a back burner. Um, but if... Uh, recovering from a car accident gives you anything. It's lots of time to think. Um, <laughs> so uh, we did, spoiler, we did fully recover. I am walking. Yes. My wife is perfectly fine right now. So we're teaching doctors how to right click. So, um, <laughs> so, um, but I live. But I live. So, but when you're in a hospital bed sitting around being like, why didn't, they, why didn't EA email me back? Uh, it gives you a lot of time to like, contemplate your life. And, and this was sort of another turning point where I was like, why was, why was nobody hiring, right? Um, so uh, I, I, was, I, was, uh, I, was, I was chatting with my wife and we literally were in matching hospital beds. It was kind of cute and kind of sad at the same time. And she said, um, why don't you go back to school? I was like, well, I already went. Why? I already got a master's degree. Like, should I get a PhD? 
And uh, at that time, there was a new online program that had just came out called Animation Mentor. So some of you maybe have stumbled across some of that. It wasn't a degree. It was like a workshop. So I'm just like, go back to that. So um, sort of side side uh, side track here. So um, this was in 2006. Unbeknownst to me at that time, this woman, Carol Dweck, uh, was publishing a book called Mindset. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about that book just because it's a cool book. And I felt like you needed a break from me, like not getting a job in crashing cars. So uh, <laughs> um, I wouldn't read it for almost 10 more years, but I'll summarize basically what it says. In mindset, she says that there are sort of two different types of mindsets that you can have, two different types of ways of looking at the world. There's a fixed mindset. Uh, fixed mindsets believe their people with fixed mindsets believe their abilities are predetermined, um, and they see failure as a personal judgment. Um, they might say something like, I'm not good at multiplication, right? And that means, like, I wasn't born with the multiplication gene, right? That's how they would look at the world, right? Um, the other type of mindset is called a growth mindset, and that's people who understand that their abilities can be developed and improved, right? That it is possible to get better at things. They, those people see failure as a challenge to overcome, not something that's like, you're, you know, you're bad at that. You were born bad at that. This is like, no, I'm bad at that right now. I can get better at it. Um, they might say, I'm not good at multiplication yet. Right? Um, and so that may not seem like a big deal until you realize how changing your mindset um, can completely change the way you look at everything. So with a fixed mindset, um, society values people who can do math. You are struggling with math. You believe your ability to do math is fixed and cannot be improved. So you avoid math so you won't expose your weakness. The result is you do not get better at math, right? Um, people with a growth mindset sees society values people who can do math. You are struggling with math. Here's the difference. You believe your ability to do math can be improved. You see math as a challenge, a goal to overcome. You do get better at math, right? And in case you think this is just navel-gazing or philosophy or something like that, no, this is trackable. If you teach people the growth mindset, you watch them get better at things, right? Um, and it, unfortunately, it's something that I don't necessarily think the education system is great at reinforcing because uh, you, you, you get a math test either right or wrong. Um, but... It's worth sort of noticing this. So in this example, um, the students who were struggling at math, the only difference between the, this was all students who were struggling with math, the only difference between the uh, control group and uh, the growth group was that uh, the control group, the teacher, would use words that praised um, students' effort, not their intelligence, in the growth group. Um, so instead of telling them they were smart, they would say stuff like, great job on the extra effort you put into improving your grade, right? She get locked out. <laughs> oh yeah, that door's kind of getting weird. So again, the only difference was this: the teacher would praise them for their effort, not their intelligence. You wouldn't say you're smart. You would say. Good job on that extra effort you put in on studying for that math test, right? Uh, for students with a fixed mindset, this improved their ability to recognize they actually could get better at math. It changed their mindset from a fixed to a growth mindset. Now, if you took students that you didn't do that with, their grade only continued to decline. But just by telling them good work on that hard effort, right, their grade would rise. Oh, yeah, right? And it's because you start to understand that you are capable of getting better at anything. You may not end up being like... My, my wife likes to point out that I will probably never be uh, somebody who can race in the Kentucky Derby with a jockey. Uh, like, okay, yeah, I, but I can get better at riding a horse um, if the horse agrees. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I have to be a big horse. But um, So back to me uh, contemplating my life. Um, so sort of the... Uh, um, So, I, again, I spent a lot of time considering what my weaknesses were as an animator, and, um, and I really didn't know. Like, I really could not come up with that answer. What is, 
What is it that I need to get better at? I felt like I had studied everything. I had read all the books I could find. Why wasn't I getting better? So um, I went to Animation Mentor. Now, uh, this is um, this is their logo. Uh, it's a one and a half year series of online workshops. Uh, there's actually several different places that have this now. I think that they work best as that, as workshops, not as replacements for college. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. I get into it. But there's uh, places like iAnimate, uh, Anim Squad, and Anim School. Um, and all of these are just industry veterans, people who've worked in the animation industry, who will teach you how to, uh, to animate in these workshops. Um, after I went through that, this was my, my demo reel coming out of Animation Mentor. Besides, even if you didn't do it, I'm going to punish you because I'm big and you're small and I'm right and you're wrong and there's nothing you can do about it. You want to go with me? <laughs> Where do you want to go? I mean, like, go with me, like, you know, like, that's what we call it here. Going together. Sure. before I graduated though, um, I got hired by a game studio. So um, I've mentioned it to you before, Fraxis Games in Baltimore, Maryland. So I went and worked with them uh, for about five years. Um, if, if you're unfamiliar with their games, they make the Civilization franchise. So I'm the reason everybody's mad at Gandhi. Um, I'm the reason uh, people like, well, no, everybody, people like Napoleon because he's just interesting. Um, <laughs> um, don't be mad at Gandhi though, he's a good guy. Um, so, Mainly doing character animations for cinematics and cutscenes, or things that would equate to that. So diplomacy and civilization is where uh, you interact with the leaders and like try to trade with them and stuff like that. So <clears throat> it's not a full-on cutscene; it's somewhat interactive. Um, some of the other things I had to work on was like the XCOM franchise. I uh, worked on some of the uh, cinematics for that. I uh, got to do a little bit of uh, guest work for um, Bioshock Infinite and a couple of other studios. Um, but after five years, uh, I, I got an opportunity to, uh, to try a different job. Um, so you guessed it. Back to each issue. Okay, we're back. Part, wait, part three. Um, so essentially what happened is uh, I was looking to get back closer to family. Right? I'm, I'm from this, uh, I'm from Tennessee. My, my wife is from this region. I'm from north of Knoxville. Um, and this position opened up, and I kind of wanted to try some freelance work anyway. So I was like, yeah, let me apply. And so I applied um, to a, and got a lecturer position. Now, lecturer is different than professor. Remember when I said earlier, the MFA, or sorry, the uh, Masters of Science. Masters of Science is not usually the degree they want for a professor. So um, I actually did have to go back to school one more time, um, but I won't bore you with that. I basically went back and got my MFA in writing um, online. So, uh, but to get this job, <clears throat> I had to apply with, or at least to get the professor job, I had to apply with my demo reel one more time, right? And so this is my, um, my newest demo reel. This is the, the newest one I put together. It's not got everything I've done in the last year, but it's, it was, I think, late 2018 when I made this one. And so this is what I consider my current demo reel uh, right now. Wait, I skipped it. Till 
जनपदो अभिवर्धीसी बहुतरंग चंबुदी बस सासने उत्तमो इमिदा अहंग बस साम लिर तो हो तो हो वाली तो की तो लिर दाहत अपंगों को नंग यू यू डोंट अंडरस्टैंड I have to get to the others. going to punish you because I'm big and you're small and I'm right and you're wrong and there's nothing you can do about it Somebody else who's not me for a minute. Um, oh, I was playing it again. Okay. So um, back in 2006, Jonathan Hardesty. I've actually never met Jonathan Hardesty. He doesn't know I exist. But I'm sorry. Back in 2002, on a website that used to exist called Concept ConceptArt.org, there was a forum, and it was a place where you could share your work and like get feedback on it. And he posted this. He said. Um, I'm starting at rock bottom. I'm going to paint at least one painting and do at least one sketch every day, probably two on the weekends. The order you see them in is the order that I've painted and or sketched them. Right? Every day, starting at 9.15.02, um, I am burying my soul to everyone. I will post everything I do, whether it is awful or not. Right? So the very first post, that post came with this. This was his starting point. In 2002, and he actually kept it up. Like he he continued to post on that forum until it closed down. Like that forum no longer exists. So this was day one, and then you know you, if you scroll down the forum a little further, you would get to day two or day five or something like that, right? And the really cool thing about this, he actually eventually compiled this together into a video that you could just watch all of his progress, one image at a time, and uh, and if you keep going through that video, you'll see like, yeah, he's struggling with stuff that he's learning, right? He's, he's figuring out maybe a little bit about perspective here, and then maybe he's figuring out something about shading here. And um, this is September 23rd, I think it was on this one. And then if you keep going even further, you're like, okay, well, that's getting better, right? And then you go a little further, and you see him just get better and better and better. That's a drawing. Um, and better, that's an oil painting. Better, uh, better. I, this is Jonathan Hardesty incrementally getting better at something. This is Jonathan Hardesty proving that Carol Dweck's um, idea is correct, right? That if you believe you can get better at something, you can go from this to this, right? Um, so, uh, so this comes up a lot. Like it, I show my demo reel, or I'm talking to uh, people, and they're like, "Well, which is your favorite piece? The favorite piece you've ever done?" And I have to say, like, um, I, I, you know, just it, it's. It, I, I've been asked that a lot, and, and I, I believe my favorite piece is this one, right? Um, and it's because it sucked, and I recognized it sucked, and I kept going. Right? I didn't stop. I kept pushing on this, I kept trying to get better every day, um, because it's okay to suck, because everybody sucks at first, right? right. I'm, I'm just joking, it's this one. Uh, <laughs> so, no, anyway, that's the, that's the entire thing. Um, I, I would like to kind of open it up to questions or comments that you may have. Feel free to add me on LinkedIn. Okay. 
<laughs> uh, I didn't bring any business cards. Uh, any questions y'all have about any of this? About anything? I mean, I know you have questions about how to get your character rigged and animated, but and we'll get to those. Because <laughs> right, this is kind of the last lecture. It's also important to recognize that this is the last time we'll meet in this class before the finals. Right? Oh, what about Tuesday? Do you know class Tuesday? Mm -hmm. no. so, so finals week, you only have like whenever your final is. So um, I will be here all week during the day from 8-ish to 5-ish um, every day of next week um, and this Friday. So if you have issues, you're here working, come by my office, you don't need an appointment, just knock on the door and if I'm in there, I'll, I'll help you out. Right? Um, well, we also have the rest of today to be, uh, uh, to be working on this as well. Um, this kind of gives you a little bit of a head start on the discussion for next week, and feel free to sort of move forward to that discussion whenever you want to. Um, but in that, I have a, a video you can watch, and it's basically Carol Dweck, the woman from The Mindset, uh, things I was talking about earlier, um, discussing her book and, and the ideas behind it. If you if you are interested in reading that book, it's a great book. Um, it's not super exciting as a read. It, it's got a lot of statistics. I, I, the audio book is pretty good, um, but like the the proof is like amazing. Like some of the stuff that just by adding these mon mindset theories to it, um, how it's improved um, people's lives is amazing. I think the thing that I would um, sort, of, uh, sort of suggest to you is. To look at where you are right now, right? That's that's kind of what I did here. Is I looked at where I was on that day that I was making this presentation, and I said, "Well, where did I start?" Right? Because I wasn't born with this. Nobody was born with the animation gene, right? Um, and so you can you have a you have a maybe smaller scale version of the same thing. You can look at what you're making right now. And then look back at yourself where you were the day I came in and you were terrified and I had a ukulele. Uh, you've gotten better, right? Right? Yeah. yeah. Right? Okay. You should hope so. You should hope so, right? You had a whole semester's worth of work that you, you got better, right? Um, that was not a fluke. That was not something that like, was some miraculous event that, like, that the, the Pope needs to recognize for this class. That's going to happen in every class you go into, right? The thing that you should pay attention to is the amount you got better was directly proportional to the amount of effort you put into this class, right? And so you're going to go into classes next semester, and on day one, you're going to be like, oh my goodness, this is terrifying. I don't know if I can do this. Physics is way hard. I'm just not good at physics. Um, what is this? I don't like playing video games. This game design class is going to be difficult. Like whatever it is you, whatever it is you, I can't draw and I'm in principles of visualization. Ah, right. The thing to remember is you got better this semester, right? And you will get better next semester too. The amount you get better is all based on how hard and how much you worked on it. Now it took me 15 years to get to here. It took me 10 years just to get my first job. I don't think it's going to take you that long. Um, I got lost <laughs> and wrecked a bunch of cars. So, um, huh? Yeah, it was more like it's a, a no. <laughs> that one was all right. Uh, so, <laughs> so, um, but no, it's it's going to uh, it, it's the same for you. So the amount of effort you put into it. So go into next semester recognizing that, and kind of wrap up this semester recognizing that you are um, stronger and more capable with all of this stuff that you you've done this semester. Even if you're not where you want to be, even if you still feel like, ah, I kind of struggle with math a little bit, uh, you're, you're, you're still better at this than you were three months ago, so, or however many months ago, 15 weeks ago. So. All right, cool. I'm going to shut up and let you all, uh, <laughs> let you all uh, work on the, um, the projects. And if you have any questions, I'll, I'll be here. But the rest of the class is yours. So. One of those models that kind of looks like a little I'm talking about. Well, I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs> <laughs>